Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and in this video I'm going to show you how to paint a space marine in the exact same style as a jacket I had as a kid growing up in the 90s. So I don't know if you've been looking for a tutorial for how to uh, paint this uh, nostalgic windbreaker style uh, from the 90s, but if that is exactly what you're looking for, then this is the video for you. So uh, anyways, uh, this was not exactly the idea I had when I started out. I just wanted to paint some fun patterns and use some fun colors on a Space Marine. So I got out one of the Space Marines I have from the Leviathan box that Games Workshop sent to me. It's one of those from the Inferno squad with the big flamer guns. And I primed it with my white scars primer as I usually do. And then I started to draw in the designs using a pencil, as you can see here. You could also just paint them on directly using, you know, paint and a brush. But I find that I have just a little bit more control over what's actually going on with the uh, with the patterns when I draw, draw them by hand using a pencil first. So you could skip this step, but I would recommend that you try it out with a pencil first if this is your first time working with patterns or if you just like them to be just that bit more accurate when you have your finished product. The shapes I'm drawing here are just random geometrical shapes, really. And you could, of course, draw anything you'd like. But for this style of painting and also for the time I want to invest in it, this is something I'm painting for fun. And I, I want it to be like a cool painting project, but I don't want to spend like 100 hours painting a photorealistic pattern on, on a space marine. I don't even think I could do that. But even if I could, I, I, that's just not what I'm after. So I start filling out the shapes and for the first ones I'm using Griffhound Orange, which is a contrast paint. You could of course use any type of paint you want for this. I just think that contrast paints are easy to work with and they give a nice coverage in one go, which is exactly what I'm after. The next color I'm using is Lockshun Purple, also a contrast paint. And I'm so happy with this color. It's the first real sort of nice deep, vibrant purple that have come out of the contrast range and I really appreciate it and I try to incorporate it into as many of my painting projects as I can. The third color I'm using for the base coat is called Croxical Scales. It's also a contrast paint and it's sort of a nice rich turquoise color that I really like too. I thought these three colors would just look fun together. They don't... I mean... The turquoise and the purple sort of match and the turquoise and the orange are like on opposite sides of the color wheel more or less. And so, yeah, the turquoise sort of makes the other two colors work together, I think, um, because, I don't know, purple and orange on their own are not my favorite colors. On the other hand, they are really striking and really weird. And so I thought it would just be a fun color combination. And I was just excited to see where that would take me. You'll also notice that the contrast paints here look a little bit uneven. And that's because they're not meant really for being painted on a flat surface anyway. So I'm not being entirely fair to them. I don't really mind because I'm going to be covering most of the surface with highlights and so on. So it doesn't really impact the final product at all and also again this is something that is really quick to work with and i chose that over ordinary acrylic paints which you could definitely have used if you wanted to go that route instead of the contrast paints there's nothing magical about the contrast paints in a color scheme like this it is just something i'm using for convenience and because i think they're fun Next up, I grabbed my Black Legion contrast paint and I used that to draw a black outline around each and every single shape. And the reason I do this is both because I think it really enhances the final result, but also because it makes it much easier when I'm going to be highlighting uh, in the next step, just because now I know for certain exactly where each single uh, geometrical shape begins and ends. When that was done, it was finally time to begin highlighting, which is the part of the painting process that I probably love the most. And for the first layer of highlights on the turquoise, I mixed a bit of quantum green and blaster blue, which are fluorescent paints from Huge Miniatures, and then just a touch of white in as well to get a light turquoise color that I could use, as you can see here, as a sort of edge highlight. After the first step of highlighting the turquoise was done, I mixed in just a little bit more white in the original mix. And then I just highlighted some of the tips of each geometrical shape. So every single shape will have at least one uh, point where you have more of a highlight going on. And as you can see here, I'm not even being consistent highlighting uh, the tops of the bottoms. I more or less 
try to highlight uh, just where I think it would look fun and cool because going for realism at this point seems completely pointless. So this is just, well, I'm just having fun basically. <laughs> For the first layer of highlight on the orange, I use laser orange, which is also a fluorescent color from Huge Miniatures. And for work such as this, I tend to keep my paints uh, at a relatively thick consistency because I think it makes them easier for me to control. And it also makes it a little bit easier for me just to do a single layer or two layers for uh, each individual edge highlight instead of having to go over them, let's say, four or five times as I might have to do if I thinned them down. For the extreme highlights on the orange, I am using Starfire Yellow, which is also a paint from Huge Miniatures. Next up, I started working on the purple parts of the armor. And for the first layer of highlights, I chose Ultraviolet, which is also a paint from Huge Miniatures. And I was kind of happy with it, but at the same time, I'm, it, I know it sounds a little bit weird because there are so many weird colors going on, but I thought it looked just a tiny bit bland it needed to pop just a little bit more just to at least well <laughs> suit my taste in this particular style um and so i decided that instead of um of just mixing in a little bit of white in the original purple paint and using that for a highlight i wanted to go with a pink highlight and for that i used a cyber pink also from huge miniatures and i think that uh, that actually helped a lot i was much more happy with that and i tried to use it a little bit sparingly because i wanted the purple shapes to still look purple just with pink uh, like extreme highlights of pink uh, and not making it look like it was just entirely pink so this is sort of um a question of, of moderation which is which can be a little bit difficult for me but i really tried to apply it here then I thought that the turquoise parts of the armor were also looking just a little bit boring now next to the sort of violently highlighted uh, purple and orange. And so I went back over some of the highlights using Quantum Green from Huge Miniatures, which is a very lovely uh, fluorescent green color. Very, um, It really pops and I thought that might pop even more than the uh, sort of pastel looking um, turquoise color that I had mixed up. After that, I was actually quite happy with the colors. And so I decided to go back with my Black Legion contrast paint and then retrace my uh, earlier steps where I did the black outline. Even though I tried to be careful when I did the highlighting, um, you can't really help but to uh, do make slight mistakes that makes the whole thing look just slightly fussy. And to me, a paint job such as this that is so busy and has so many weird colors and shapes and so on, it needs to be as accurate as you can make it to make it look, well, good, if you think it looks good, I don't know. <laughs> um, just to make it look like you're, this is the way it was supposed to be somehow. Um, so I, uh, I always go back over stuff like this with a black outline just to make sure that it's as nice and sharp and crisp as I can possibly make it. And here you can see the final result. And I swear to all the gods in the Warhammer universe that this looks exactly like me when I was growing up in the 90s. It looks exactly like a windbreaker jacket I had when I went to kindergarten or something. Um, well, of course, the only slight difference being that I was a little girl and this is like a superhuman power armor dude with a flamethrower um, that I did not have growing up in the 90s. Would be cool, would have been cool, but I didn't. So there you go. Anyways, um, this is what it looks like. And I have to say, I think it was quite fun to paint. I did not really know what to expect from the final look when I started painting it. It was just an experiment, more or less. Um, but I really think he looks fun. I'm not sure I would like to do an entire army of these just because it does take quite some time to get the uh, to paint all the patterns and stuff. But for a single one-off painting project, it was definitely fun. And of course, since I painted him with all these fluorescent colors, as you can see, he glows under a UV light, which is, I, I think it's one of the things about painting that I really look forward to the most, except for edge highlighting. I know I'm weird about the edge highlighting, but I really, really like to turn on the UV light and see what they look like. It's just so much fun to me and it seems almost like magic every single time, even though I know that it will happen and why it happens. It's just one of those things, I suppose. 
Well, uh, that was the video I wanted to show you. And if you have any questions or comments and stuff, please leave them in the comment section, of course. I also always appreciate a like and a subscription to the channel. And as always, you can also follow me as Dyson Demons over on Instagram and Twitter if you want to stay up to date on my painting projects. And last but certainly not least, I want to thank the awesome people who support this channel over on Patreon. So thank you so much to Thomas Masson, Scott Broadway, Andrew Correa, Anthony Paul Castro, Queen's Wolf, JJ Walsh, Gwena Il, Mola Mola, TJ Kubiak, Mando Project, Starcon85, S. Beer, Echinococcus, Firelord21 and Elliot Philby. If you want to join these awesome people in supporting this channel on Patreon, I'll leave a link to that in the show notes. Any kind of support is of course massively appreciated, but I also completely understand if you do not have the means to do so or you just don't wish to support on Patreon, that's completely fine. I also massively appreciate just people watching the videos and commenting and liking and so on. That just means the world to me. I really enjoy making this channel. So if you have any ideas for things you'd like to see me paint or stuff you'd like to see improved on the channel, please let me know and I will definitely take it under consideration. So thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.